So this is my friend Ashley. She's got a really cool testimony. Hi, you guys. So in September, I text Pastor Mike. I was in a car accident four years ago, and they were suing me. It was a 10-mile-per-hour accident. Um, nobody was hurt. And three years later, I got a letter from my insurance company saying that they never settled. And I had no idea that it was even still going on. I thought everything was taken care of. So it went from 50000 to 100000 to $1.6 million that this woman was suing me for that was completely unjust and was not, everything in the accident was false. So it kept getting worse and worse and worse. And I text Pastor Mike and on September 17th, I asked him, I said, we are having a, a settlement hearing on September 21st and I am praying and envisioning that the $1.6 million will go away. Pastor Mike texted me and said, nothing to worry about. The prayer team sees the whole issue over and behind you. That will absolutely come to pass. See the end how you desire it to be. That will absolutely come to pass. Accept what you have prayed for as done and that there is no stress at all. My lawyer called me the next day and said, are you available for a mediation hearing? We are not going to go to trial. We're going to try to settle it. And I told her over the phone, don't you worry. It's already been taken care of. It's going to be done. My pastor told me that it's already been seen as past and done. And she said, hmm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so she, I got on mediation the next day, and they had already come to the table for seventy-five thousand. And I said, "No, it's, it's still not done. It's going to go to fifty thousand. And she called me later that day, and it was settled and done for fifty thousand, and I owed nothing. Yeah, amen. That's tough for a lawyer, right? My pastor said it was done. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Good job. She was a little nervous before. You did great. Didn't she do good? Yeah. Well, well, my mother would correct me. You did well. You did well. Huh? Oh, no, it was really good. Isn't that exciting stuff? So all you guys, whether it's legal, whether it's whatever, you literally, that's what we're talking about tonight is, is really, uh, I'll go through it, but it, I, I've never seen it like right now around the world, all the testimonies coming in like that and, and just teaching you, isn't it simple to pray how we're teaching how to pray? So much, you don't need years of Bible school. You don't, here's what's really amazing. You don't need to know one verse. You don't need to know one verse in Scripture, right? Because he says, everybody's going to know me from the least to the greatest, and I'm going to write my teaching on your heart. I'm not going to write it with ink or tablets of stone, which causes what? Death is what it says. But the Spirit, Spirit, can you read Spirit? No, Spirit's not anything visible. Spirit, he goes, I'm going to, the, new, the, the Spirit is written on your heart, so you can have whatever you want. Isn't that amazing? So we're going to talk about that a little bit tonight. And so anyway, that's why, Rhonda, I wore this shirt for you. Yeah. Actually, I did talk about you, but I wanted to, there's, I, there's a shirt from Chris and Christy that they gave me, but I wanted to talk about Supernatural tonight. So how many guys have ever de, de, uh, detasseled corn? Yeah, yeah. All, all of us Iowa kids, right? And Illinois and Nebraska kids. And so anyway, this is who I detasseled corn for it. And I thought it's perfect. It's, you've seen me talk about this shirt, but it's a flying corn cob. Have you ever seen a corn cob fly? No, it's supernatural, right? It's just, it's, it's, that's why I wanted to wear it. Well, so anyway, so they got me this, uh, this, uh, I don't know if they won today, but West Virginia Mountaineer shirt. So Chris and Christy, thank you um, for that shirt. And they gave me West Virginia bling, which I'll never use, so you can have that, right? Anyway, thanks, but I wanted to wear this shirt for a reason tonight. So anyway, want to hear another testimony? I got a ton, but um, see, here's what's really cool is uh, 
the more you understand your oneness, where you're not two, you're one with God, and we'll talk about some of the implications of that, um, it really is unlimited what we can do. I think all of us agree that God can do anything, don't we? Yeah, all things are possible. You know, we're like, oh, God. But then you limit yourself out. But if you're one and God can do all things, then you should be able to do all things, right? And so we'll talk about some of these things that I, I think just because this, the, the, the idea of separation, that somehow we've been separate from God, how it's, how it's kind of twisted our theology and how it's kind of twisted what we dare to believe and, and different things like that. So I'm proud of you for just going... No, no, it's not enough yet. I, I don't want to owe anything in this deal, right? And stick to your guns because that's tough with an attorney. They're going, you're going to lose. You need to settle. And, and there's just, no, I saw it done. It's over. Cool? And so we've got some, anyway, this is kind of fun. So this is, uh, I'm just going to say her first name because I'm not, I don't know if she gave me permission to say her whole name, but this is Lori. She watches online. She says, um, hey, Mike, I just want you to know my life has changed because of your teachings. January will be, uh, <clears throat> two years I've been faithfully listening. In March, when the big C COVID was announced, I pray the way you teach us to pray. Thanking my father for everyone in my family. Now, here's what I want you to get. All things are possible to him who believes. Right? And when he says, I've given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. Every promise is yes and amen in him. All things are possible. What possibility is left out? None. So you can pick whatever you want. Isn't that amazing? Like you can pick any possibility because he's outside of time. So that what he says is creation is done. I've created all things. And was it bad or was it good? It's good. He goes, I've created all things and it's good. So we get confused. Like, well, where's all this junk come from? And there's no evil outside of the human heart and mind, guys. There's no, that's where all the evil is, is the misuse of what the one spirit he's been giving us. It's tough to get, but because we've been taught so differently. But so when COVID hits and, and, uh, and James and Rhonda, you've had testimonies like this. You, like you're, you had your best months ever, right? When you're supposed to go backwards in all this stuff in, in most people's thinking. So check this out. So in March, when the big C was announced, I prayed the way you teach us, thanking my father for having my family. I thought, you know what? I'm gonna, every one of us is gonna have a five times increase in our income during COVID. Why not? Any, if you can choose any possible, now she's probably going, dang, I should have done 10, right? <laughs> And you know that works. It works. That's what's amazing. So, so far, our little consignment shop is still not open to the public, but it has increased its sales five times just through eBay, Craigslist, referrals from our attorney, and the general word of mouth. Plus, we were asked to sell a painting by, all caps, very famous artists, which was quite nice to our bottom line. Then, my 20-year-old son is working the laptop lifestyle. How many of you guys want a laptop lifestyle? You can do it. He's working the laptop lifestyle in his dream job, living on the beaches of Mexico. He's speaking fluent Spanish. And guess what? He's making exactly five times more than before the pandemic. Praise the Lord. I cry every time I remember I'm one with him. Isn't that cool? Yeah, isn't that good? Man, so good. So I'll, I'll get into this because there's, I got some more here that I'd share with you, but there's good things going on. Um, what's the score, Jeff? I know like Brent and Leslie are probably interested. All the Oklahoma people. So you guys watching it? <laughs> I would be too, but I was already over. So goofy church service when Oklahoma's playing. Like, what's with that, right? So I get it completely. But there's a big fight tonight too. But let's teach you how to, I, I kind of want to wrap this up about prayer. But gosh, I'm just telling you, I've never seen it. Just how simple it is and how, what people are saying going, in one week it's radically transformed how I pray. And everything in my life starting to look up and, I've got joy and results, and so I just want to share that with you. So, you know, I, you know I don't like titles because things change when you get up here, but anyway, I, I just really wanted to, if, if God and I are one and all things are possible to him, where's the kingdom? He tells us where the kingdom is. Where's the kingdom? Within, right? So God's not out there somewhere in charge of things. That is really hard for Christians to get. Because I, I hear this a lot, like, um, God's got this. Yeah, but he's in you, and he's one with you, and he's given you the keys to the kingdom. He says, I've, it's the Father's great pleasure to give the kingdom to who? You. And he goes, you don't know how much I've got this, because I've got what you got. And if you really get a hold of this thing, 
you're going to be more excited. Some at first people get nervous, like you mean like God's not in charge. I'm like, it's way better. He's given you, and kingdom just means basilia. It's royal rule and reign. He says, I've given you my royal rule and reign. And then he says, I've given you the keys to the royal rule and reign. And then you guys know this is what it says. I'm going to I'm going to say it in King's English first. Type most of you guys learn it, and then I'll kind of explain it. But it says, whatever you bind in heaven will be bound on earth, and what do you loose in heaven, you loose on earth. Now, to the Hebrew, you got to understand where heaven and earth is. The kingdom's inside you, so where do you think heaven and earth was to them? Inside you. Well, they didn't think so. They thought heaven and earth was the temple where, where God meets man, so all the Old Testament stories are really stories about you, if you, if you understand it. And so, that's why Jesus and Paul were so adamant and John in the New Testament going, don't you get it? Ye are the temple of God. So all those stories where God meets man is within you. You're the temple. So if you look at all those stories, when the high priest went in to, to meet face to face with God, if they asked for anything, it was assured. The high priest would come out, they'd be all fired up and have a big party, Right? And then he's going, you are face to face with God within you, meaning there's, you're not separate, you're one. And so I've given you, and he says, whatever you do in the spirit, that's the heavens to them where God meets man, whatever you permit there will be permitted on earth. Whatever you don't permit there, no, you know what? I'm not going to pay anything because I wasn't at fault in this, and I'm going to hold to my guns on that. I've seen it done in the spirit where I, I'm not going to pay anything. So whatever I don't permit in the heavens is not going to be permitted in the earthly realm. He's given you the keys. Isn't that good news? So don't get nervous. People are like, because oh, at first they kind of flustered. I go, it's way better because you get to choose. You have so much more say in this than you think. So that should excite you, but, but maybe not some of you guys. Um, <laughs> excites me. <laughs> excites me because uh, that's really, oh, I forgot one thing. So People have been pestering me about house fellowships. So anybody in Colorado, we are going to do one at our house tomorrow night at 5. So um, I'll give you the address. I'll say it now, and you can go listen to it. It's 1385-1385, Regatta Lane, R-E-G-A-T-T-A, 1385 Regatta Lane, Monument, Colorado. So 5 o'clock, you get snacks, bring a bottle of wine, whatever you want. Well, and then at 6, I do the, the online fellowship. So we just wanted to do it where, um, hey, if you need prayer, if you want to just come, uh, ask tough questions, I'll let Barb talk to you. <laughs> right? If I don't know it, I'll just make it up. Because <laughs> that's most of the pastors I grew up under. Like, I found out they just made it up. Like, it, they just made it up, literally. I'm like, well, where's that? Well, I don't know. That's what I was taught. It's like, it's just like oh, so I can just make stuff up too. Um, I'm just joking. It's actually, uh, so anyway, let's, let's get into this. So, um, so he says this, you know, if you're one with God and God can do anything and he's unlimited, I, I think we all agree with that, don't we? We all agree like, yeah, God's unlimited. This oneness thing, I've barely been hammering it because if God's one with me, we're not two, we're not less than one, we're, we're, we're one. We're in unity. That means your creative ability has to be the same as his. Does that make sense to anyone? If we're just going to like straight logic this thing. So now what's really cool as I've been teaching is, um, like I said, I've spent a lot of money, a lot of years really trying to boil down all of this like to, a, to something really manageable that a kid could understand. And I think we're there. Like, really how prayer works. And, and like I said, the great news is you don't have to be hyper-spiritual. You don't have to know one verse. You don't have to go to Bible school. To, in fact, most of you guys are going to have to unlearn some stuff if you do. Um, oneness means something. And so what's really cool is we know this, is when Jesus talks about the kingdom, he says, what should we liken it to? Your heart is like soil. So if you plant a, a corn seed, you're going to get corn. It's, it's, there's no questions, right? And he goes, that's how the kingdom works. So we know this, is whatever thoughts or words you tell your heart when it's receptive, it's absolute going to come to pass. So that's where I said, no, you know what, in the prayer team, we've already seen it, it's done. And even if it looks like it's going backwards, if, you, if situations come in your life where it looks like it's not working, if you've seen the end, guys, just, just hold. It's going to happen. Isn't that cool? 
because you cannot plant corn and not get corn. That's what he's trying to say. So knowing that, here's what I, I really want to talk about the supernatural because, and the supernatural shouldn't be anything weird. We're, if we're one with God, then we know all the, the, the scriptures talk about all these supernatural events and all these great things. Like I think just deciding that her whole family wants to make five times when everybody's telling her it's going to go less, that's pretty cool, isn't it? That's pretty cool to me. And you know what? Any one of you can do it. Now, what I want you to get, though, is most of you guys is, is try, really trying to get out of this logic left brain thing because we're, we're, we're stuck in it. And unfortunately, most Christianity is just left brain knowledge to me. And if, you're, if you have this, this is just for all of you, if you have this passion that I need to know more of the Bible, I need to pray more, I need to do more, or I need to stop doing some sin, or all of it's out of lack. So it so, all sounds good, but it's not true. Because Scripture says this, you're complete in Christ, lacking nothing. And that complete is the Greek word teleos, meaning there's nothing to add to you. You've got it all already. So you don't have to go learn more verses. You don't have to go serve God more. And and I'll explain this oneness. Once you get this oneness thing where I'm one with God, do you need worship? Do you personally need worship? Do you need anybody to worship you? Then we got a weird... We got a weird idea of worship to God then too, don't we? It really, it's really starts to make you question some things. I think healthy, like really healthy. Um, so if we can have anything and we can choose anything, what if you knew that, if you knew how to pray right, you could have complete divine health. I don't care what it looks like, what the diagnosis has been. I don't care what the, the medical condition has been for how many years. You can have divine health and, and full of energy. Wouldn't that be a good choice? And people are doing it, which is really fun. So I, I love this one. Wouldn't it be cool to just live in the miraculous in an uncommon life? Where things come up and you're mature enough to go, you know what? Every, the economy and everything they're saying I'm supposed to go backwards. I'm just going to choose to see myself and everybody in my family making five times what they be, made before the pandemic. That's cool. And they could have done 10. <laughs> could have done 100, Right? Does that, that not excite anybody? That excites me. Like, I, I, I know, like, the first time I heard stuff like this, it just, my heart exploded. And, and here's why, because we were born out of divinity. So we're, we're remembering our birth. Like, I because rem- there's one spirit, right? The same spirit that's in Christ is in you. So does Christ know everything at all times throughout history? Yeah, so when we hear stuff like walking in the miraculous and doing the miraculous, our heart leaps because we're remembering where we came from. We're remembering that one spirit. We're getting glimpses and pieces of it, as Paul talks about, that we're like, yeah, yeah, you were supposed to operate. We're supposed to naturally operate in the supernatural, meaning when there's a natural situation, not to freak out, you can literally take your eyes off the natural situation, I don't care what it is, and choose a different outcome. And that's the glory of God. I'll, I'll go through the, the Hebrew a little bit on and what imagination is in Hebrew too. So what if your heart contains the miracle working power to bring any of your dreams into reality? Wouldn't that be good? And what I want you to get is, is, I love how Joe Dispenza says it. Most of us have taught, you got to do this, put in the work, do this, do that, do that. And I love what he says. He goes, most of you think you have to drag your body through time and space to get what you want. He goes, that is not spiritual. That is matter trying to push matter. Where Einstein really started to get it, and David Baum and all these quantum physicists, where they're going, energy equals matter. So literally, you can choose a different outcome with your heart and mind and change the situation in no time. That's really all a miracle is, isn't it? Like all the miracles, like, and I've, heard, I've told you, I've, this stuff fires me up because it should be naturally natural. We should just live this way. Where, I, you know, I've told you the story with Bishop Uyedipo, the first time I, I'd never heard anybody talk like that where this woman had her uterus physically removed and she wanted a baby now, most of us in the natural would go, that's an impossibility, right? He didn't skip a beat, did he? He goes, you need to make up your mind. Do you want a uterus or a baby? And my brain is going, what did he just say? Because I've got enough medicine that I'm like, that, no, that's not how it works. That's not how it works at all. Like, <laughs> no, that's, it doesn't work that way, right? And we saw the testimony. She's holding her baby. She didn't have a uterus. Praise God, man. We should be that way, right? If all things are possible, why not choose that possibility? Wouldn't that be a better possibility than to get all technical? Well, here's why you can't, and because of the science. And I love science when it, 
when it proves the supernatural. And I was just sharing with Barb, I said, I find it interesting, like, you know, if like Dr. Do- Joe Dispenza. So here's these neuroscientists, these quantum physicists, and here's the title of his book, Becoming Supernatural, Common People Doing the Uncommon. And he talks about all this kind of stuff where stage four cancer is gone in four days and, and uh, uh, all these miraculous, like five times income, just by seeing and, seeing and feeling with our heart a different outcome. Now, I'm going to teach you how simple it really is to get your heart receptive. So whatever, you, whatever thought or whatever you tell your heart in that state is miraculous, is the miracle working power of God, and it's simple. You don't need to spend years trying to learn how to meditate. You don't have to go in your prayer closet and tongue it to death for five hours. Gosh, we tried that for a couple of years, and it's just exhausting. I'm like, God, I'm falling asleep in tongues. And then, well, if you were serious, you know, you could do this for hours. And I'm like, <laughs> snoring. You know, like, I guess I'm not Christian enough. <laughs> it's like, I just want to have a, can I have an adult soda and watch the game tonight? That's what I wanted to do. Like, no, let's get your priorities straight. And I'm like, oh, I got bad priorities. So, because what I'd really like to do is that. Anyway, um, what would it feel like to have effortless success where you're not dragging your body through time and space where you can actually just decide and receive? If all things are already yours, how many things does, how many possibilities does Jesus Christ own? All. So if you are a son, then you are an heir, Paul in Romans. And if you're an heir, then you are a joint heir, co-equal with Jesus Christ. Now, most people don't believe that. That's why I'm hammering it, because repetition, I know how the heart works. You need to hear this over and over and over, because there's no yeah buts, right? Yeah, but... She doesn't have a uterus. No, 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 no. Guys who get it, like, do you want a uterus or do you want a baby? Make up your mind, lady. That's awesome because she ultimately got what she wanted. She wanted a baby, right? That's just cool to me. That's how, soup, that's, how, that's how we're originally designed. And it doesn't take, like I said, it doesn't take any hyper-spirituality. It doesn't take, this isn't some new revelation, um, New age, it's none of that, guys. In fact, most of the gospel you heard is 200 years old. It's ignored 2,000 years. So if we're going to talk new age, it's what you learned. That's very new age. You've, you've forgotten the original design. You've forgotten the, the rock that you were hewn out of is what, what Paul says to Peter, or Jesus says to Peter. Isn't that interesting? So anyway, uh, is that good stuff? Let's go through these scriptures real quick, then we'll pray. So if we go to that next slide, um, let's go to the next one. Yeah, so... This, this separation thing's really caused a lot of challenges in Christianity. Um, because most of us were taught we were separate from God. But I think if we think about this at all, life, he's the only source of life. Would we agree with that? So how were you alive without the only source of life if he wasn't in you until you said the magic words and then he jumped in you? Does that make sense to anybody I've always struggled with that. So, so I wasn't alive, but now I'm alive. Well, you were dead spiritually. You know, all these weird mental gymnastics they run you through. Like, no, I think I'm still alive. So nothing happened to me. <laughs> like, I said it, and nothing happened. And it just didn't happen. I thought, I thought it would be better than this. Like, if all of your theology and religions revol- revolved around getting somebody in, I just thought it would be better when I... It, said some magic words, and now I'm supposedly in. And I, n- I remember telling Barb, like, I don't know, I just, I felt like I've been in my whole life. Like, I've communicated with God my whole life. Like, what, what day were you saved? I'm like, I don't know. Well, then you're probably not saved. You better do it again. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> oh, I give up. So, the truth is, Paul tells you, Paul's alls, all were included. All were included from the beginning. From the foundation of the world, you were found in him. Isn't that good? If all were in Adam, all were in Christ, is his argument in Romans 5. Things above, things on earth, and things below, so that all will be in all to the glory of the Father. That was Paul's argument. Isn't that cool? So, all right, so John 17, let's look at this real quick. So here's John, and he says, he's talking about his disciples right here, and he says, I don't pray for these alone, meaning I'm not praying just for my disciples, okay? But also for those who believe in me through their message. Um, now, you can't take the other scriptures where it says we've been found in him from the foundation of the world. I've shared this with you many times, but to the, to the Jew, 
you were the only ones in by flesh, by birth, because if I had Jewish parents and I was under the law, then I was, I was accepted by God in their theology. And if I was any other uh, genos, if I was any other ethnicity, ethnos is what you know, he talks about, um, meaning whether I was uh, an Italian, a Greek, or whatever, I wasn't Jewish, what was I considered? An outsider, a Gentile, right? Now, here was the revelation. If you go look at it, to Peter, to, to John, Jesus, the, here's what they said. The Gentiles are in, and you have the same Father. Now, go share this message with them. Meaning, the message didn't make them in. The revelation was all were in, all were birthed from the same Father. Abraham's the father of many nations. Go tell them it's not just for the Jew. Everybody's in. And then if we read Paul further, it says, because uh, people are arguing about this and that, he's like, don't you guys get it? How many bodies are there, according to Paul? One. And he says, there's no longer any Jew, there's no longer any Gentile, there's no longer male, there's no longer female. We are one. One spirit, one body, one baptism, one death, one resurrection, and you were all in. That was Paul. <laughs> so Paul concludes everybody. So what he's saying is, I don't pray for these, but also for those who believe me through their word that they may be one, not two, one, as you, Father, are in me. So he's telling them, this is how you guys are going to be. You, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in both of us, that the world may believe that you sent me. So here's what he's saying. Most of you guys have, have heard the concept of Trinitarian theology, right, where Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So what he's, um, I've got some issues with that, actually, but that's neither here nor there right now. Because I think they're missing what Elohim is. I think it's one body and we're all members. But whatever. But think about this. So what he's trying, if you, if you have Trinitarian theology, let's just take it as that. So it says this, is we all kind of grew up with Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit are one. Three but one. That's kind of how most of you are taught, right? So if that was true, then he's telling you that. So just as you believe that Jesus and the Father were one, believe that you are in the Father and me. As one, we're not separate. So if we're praying for a God outside of us, we've separated ourselves again, haven't we? If I'm one with him and the kingdom's within me, if I want any answer to prayer, I'm not praying to a God out there because he's not out there. Where is he? He's sitting in your chair. <laughs> That's why like, it's astonishing to me when I was sitting in my, my chair one time, I was like, the same God that created the entire world and holds it all together according to Colossians and John is the ugly dude looking in the mirror. Like, it's me. <laughs> like, that's a mind bender, isn't it? Look what he's given you. It's such an amazing thing. So he says, that the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them. How much glory does God have? He didn't give you the junior varsity glory. He gave you his glory. And how glorious is his glory? It's expansive. You can't figure it out, right? And really, if you get into it, it's weightiness. It's doxa in Greek, but I've, I've shared this with you. If you get into the Hebrew, it's this word kavot. And you've heard me talk about this a lot, but I, I think we need to share it right here again because once you start to get this, like what I do in here is literally the creative ability of God himself. It's not lesser than God. It's not lesser glory than his glory. It's his glory doing the work. So it's not you praying right. It's you understanding who you are and how to pray. That whatever you do in here is literally the creative ability of God himself, not some lesser God. That's what he's saying. So glory is the Greek word or the Hebrew word kavot, and it's weightiness. And, it's, and it literally is kaf bet delet. You don't need to know of all this, but I'll just shorten it for you. Like he says, all nature speaks of me. So when you have a really heavy object like the sun and you have something rotating around it like the, the earth, our planet, right? This is really weighty. The sun is really weighty, is it not? Does it affect everything about the earth? Yes. So here's what he's trying to tell you. If you can look at nature, you can understand me is what Paul says. So when he talks about weightiness, that you have the influence to do anything, to influence anything in the physical realm is what he's saying. And it plays in, in Hebrew. It says, the kingdom is in, he goes, don't pray outside and with many words like, the, like the, the hypocrites do. He says, go someplace where people can't see you, the, the closet, 
you know, the high priest always went into the secret place where nobody could see what he was doing, right? And all that's pictures of what's in our heart. And so he says, what you do in there, the whole world's going to see the influence of it, doesn't it? And the word kavot is the hidden power within you to take any possibility and bring it into the physical. That's not what I was taught. I was taught Revelation song where I'm praising his glory, his honor, his everything else, not realizing he's going, he's singing over us that you're that. You're my prized creation. You carry my glory. So once we get one, does worship change a little bit? To me, it does. If, I, if my wife and I are, are one, and then I go, sweetie, here's how our marriage is going to work. <laughs> you need to worship me. <laughs> That's goofy. I'm going to be sleeping on one of yours couch, right? I'll show you some worship, right? Isn't it weird, though? Once we start getting this, where it says, and Peter, when he's trying to serve God, right? Let me wash your feet. What does Jesus tell Peter? See, because that was like servanthood. That's where their idea was, I need to serve this outside God because he's so much holier and glorious than me. And so he bends down, he's trying to wash Peter's feet, and what does Jesus say to him? Yeah, good job, Peter. You need to worship me. Clip my toenails while you're at it, right? Get my toe jam out of there. <laughs> Except that'd be a bad job, wouldn't it? It's gross. People don't touch my feet. What did Jesus say? Peter, Peter. Servanthood is dead. Sonship's the new order in town. Unless you let me serve you, you won't partake of my nature. That's glorious. That's amazing to me, isn't it? He goes, I, I've given you an inheritance within you, the Holy Spirit, that serves you. He says, I'm not going to leave you fatherless. I'm going to give you the paraclete. I'm going to give you a helper, doesn't he? And what you do in there brings everything you could ever desire to you effortlessly. You won't have to drag your body through time and space. You can receive it as the joint heir that you already are. Is that cool? I think that's cool. And literally, kavot is the hidden power. It says latent, if you go look in, in latent or latent, however you want to pronounce it. It's just hidden. It says there's a hidden ability within man that is the weightiness, the glory of God, that whatever we choose to see and feel within just trust it. It's the weightiness of God himself will transform any possibility you choose to believe into the physical. All things are possible to him. And you're one with him, so he's saying all things are possible to you. I'm just, I'm going over and over. It's probably redundant, but I still think we don't get oneness because we've been taught separation our whole life. So does that help you at all? So he says the kavot, the, I'm just going to say it like this. I'm going to say it how in Hebrew it, it would read. The ability I have to change any physical situation, I've given that ability to you. That you may be one just as we are one. I'm in them, you and me, that they may be teleos, perfect in one. You're perfect. You don't have to add one more verse to you. You need to start realizing who you are and enjoy this amazing inheritance he's given you. Does that help? You don't need to get more serious about serving God. That's weird again. Like I, I, we didn't have our kids. If I'm a joint, if I'm a son, we didn't have our kids to serve us. What do parents? What do we typically want to do for our kids? We want to serve them. We want to, we want to give them, encourage them. Yeah, especially grandkids. We don't have any yet, but I, I heard that you just lose your mind completely. So, and my girlfriend's like, I'm so ready to be a grandma. So, because she wants to like spoil her grandkids, you know. Wouldn't that be weird if you went to your grandpa and grandma's house? Like, I'm glad you're here, kids. Serve me. Now, I've seen houses like that. It usually doesn't work very well, but anyway. Uh, does this help you? Yeah. Now, let's go to the next slide. Then, then, we'll, well, then we'll pray. So I'm just trying to, get, I'm trying to get who you are. All right. So you possess all the divine attributes of God. That's an interesting thing. If I'm one with God, then I have God's ability. Mm. That kind of gets me excited, doesn't it? If, if I'm one with God, are you one with God? Yes. You're not two. He didn't give you a lesser glory. He gave you his kavot, his glory, his weightiness. Then if I'm one with him and the same as him, that, would, that should naturally mean that I can do what he does. I think I remember reading that somewhere. 
right? Here, I just picked a verse, 2 Peter 1, 2, that, which I think this is cool. Grace and peace. How many of you guys want unlimited favor, unlimited effortless success, unlimited grace, and his peace, his shalom, his irena, his, his union multiplied in your life? Yeah, okay, how do we do it? Grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God. Now, this is genitive, objective genitive, if you understand it, meaning this, is um, it's God's knowledge about you. It's not how much you know about God. Now, Bible schools have turned it into get into the word more so you know more scriptures. They miss it completely. Grace and peace is multiplied to you because of the knowledge that God has about you. He's, all, he's always known who you are. He's always known you are one with him and you are a son and daughter. It's Just go look it up if you want to go. Meaning that, so, objective genitive and subjective genitive. You guys know what I'm talking about. So, if I'm the subject of it, most people read this as I'm the subject. It's my knowledge about God. That would be subjective genitive. This is objective genitive, meaning it's God's knowledge about us. Grace and peace is multiplied when you realize how God thinks about you. Mm, that's good, isn't it? Because we think of ourselves like, oh, I did this, and God, if I could just get my act together, and, and uh, geez, I'm just, I'm just mildly stupid sometimes. Anybody ever relate to that? I do. I do. You just wake up, it's like, why couldn't you be like, like them? Then you're like, wait a minute, I'm one with him. Grace and peace is multiplying my life when I realize what God thinks about me, and he thinks I'm one with him. And he's given me everything that pertains to life and godliness. So anyway, God's knowledge about us and of Jesus, our Lord. Now, Lord, Lord, Lord there, guys, it's not, it's not thus saith the Lord. It's supreme authority. He's given you his supreme authority. Anyway, that's, that, I don't, that's not part of my talk. But So as his divine power, his divine ability has given to us how many things? It's the Greek word pos. It's Paul's all, as I call it. Paul, Paul doesn't leave anything out ever. It says, has given to us pas or panta, it'll say in Greek, everything that pertains to life, anything that we could use in our, in our physically life, and anything we can use for godliness. Now, his divine power has given to us everything that you could ever want, that you could ever need, that pertains to this life and your spiritual life. You've already been given everything. Well, if I've been given everything that I could ever need, then that just means I get to choose which part of that closet I want to wear today. It's like that simple, honestly. Hey, I'm getting sued. A million bucks. That sucks. So I don't like that. So I'm going to just choose a different possibility where I owe nothing. Yeah, that's a possibility, and I've given that possibility to you. All things are possible. That's a better possibility, right? You guys don't believe that works that way. That's what I'm trying to get you. It works that way. So through the knowledge of him, and that's like intimacy, you, you, of him who called us by kavot, his weightiness, and virtue is splendor. So called, so he called us. Now that word called is kaleo. I've, I've talked to you a million times about this too, but it literally means your surname. So my surname is what? Popovich. Guess what your real surname is? Jesus Christ, God, whatever, <laughs> the creator. You are birthed from him and he's given you, that's what that literally means. Through, you're my child I've given you my inheritance. I've given you my glory. And that word virtue is like in Hebrew, it's like splendor. Now, how splendorous is God? That's like bad to the bone splendor, isn't it? So that's like good stuff. That's like, how big can you think? What's that? Like At least, right? <laughs> exactly, Cope. So uh, by which have been given to us kind of good things. You win some, you lose some. What does he say? Exceedingly, if God's given you something great and then he puts it, no, it's not just good. It's exceedingly great. If God's exaggerating stuff, how, how good should it be? By which has been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of who I am, divine nature. I've given you my nature. So God's nature is, I can choose any possibility and, and receive it in the physical. He goes, now you're getting somewhere. That's what I've given you. Is this helping you? All right, so salvation is this word. How many of you guys know what the salvation is in Greek? 
So it's, yeah, so it's oh. And it doesn't mean you're getting to heaven if you ever go look at it, all right? So salvation means to heal, to bring back to wholeness. Your fallen mind doesn't believe any of this stuff because, well, you've been taught incorrectly, most of you. So you need to so do it. You need to realize God's always thought this about you, and he's given you everything, and he wants you to partake in his divine nature. He wants to live, you to live how he lives. And he doesn't get excited about things. He just goes, oh, okay, that's interesting. Let's change it, right? That's you. Isn't that cool? Just try it on something little after we do this, if you don't believe me. It'll work. It's really fascinating. So salvation, that sozo, is healing, it's wholeness, it's oneness, is learning how to live from the spirit within. So it's not, I said these words, and then I'm going to go to heaven someday. Heaven's within you. Heaven and earth is within you. If any man, here's Paul. He says, if any man be in Christ, are you guys in Christ? He says, if any man be in Christ, all things have been made new. It's Paul's, all's again. It's pontus, pos. So there's no new heaven and new earth that we need to wait for. He goes, you are the new heaven and the new earth. That's what Paul said. You're it. You're gonna, the revelation is God meets man in you. You're the temple. You are the new heaven and the new earth, and you can sing a new song is what he says. Isn't that cool? So, all right, how do we do it? This is really easy. And so we'll, we'll, we'll finish it up here. Um, gosh, and this is where I think science has better language than Christianity because we've all been taught like all things are possible, yet most of you guys are praying intellectually. You're, you're praying for things. You're asking a God outside of you to change you, to heal you, to, um, to make you whole, every, you know, all the, whatever you're looking for. Lord, Lord, please provide for this. And I don't know what's going on in your mind exactly, but I bet if I could get into the nooks and crannies, most of you are still praying for a God out there. You're asking for God to intervene in your life, not realizing he goes, I've given you the keys. You have it. And I will do what you want to do, good or bad. Isn't that interesting? He's like, giving it to you. I can't intervene because we're one. <laughs> I'm not outside of you. I'm one with you. And whatever you do in your heart, Guard your heart with all diligence because the, out of that are the boundaries of sozo, of life. Zoe, that, this is how much life you're going to experience. So if you only see yourself as X, this is an interesting thing. You don't get wealth. You already have it. You get wealth when you become wealth. When your thoughts are wealthy, things work for you. So, how do we get our heart to believe that we already have anything we could ever want, whether it's wealth, whether it's, whether it's wholeness, whether it's joy, whether it's all these things, and this is where the rubber meets the road, guys, is you can spend hours in prayer, you can, you can take years to learn how to meditate. Um, there's what I've been sharing with you, watching, spending tons of money, just really boiling down all these different things, going, this is how simple it is. It has to be simple enough for a child to do it. And here's what's really interesting. Children up till about seven, eight, or nine, Jesus says, hey, become like a child again, then you'll enter the kingdom. So he says, become like a child again, enter the kingdom. What's the word kingdom? Basilia. So he goes, become like a child again, and you'll enter my royal rule and reign. See, we still have this image like children are going to get in the gate of heaven. That's not what he's saying. He's saying, become like a child again, and you'll learn how to rule and reign. Now, what's really interesting about kids until seven, eight, nine, they're in this natural state called theta. You don't have to know all the science about this. It's just really good language. Where if these guys are, are healing stage four cancer in four days, let's not say it's the devil or new age. Let's go learn. They're actually getting it, right? Now, we're doing it too with the prayer team, which is really fun. But, uh, but some of you guys aren't because you're praying to a God out there. I'm telling you this works, guys. Whatever, when you learn that what, how to get into alpha and theta, which I'm going to show you, it means it's the most receptive part of your heart in that state. Whatever you tell yourself or whatever you see when your heart is receptive like that absolutely comes to pass effortlessly in your life. So wouldn't that be a good thing to know is how to get our... Now, kids don't have alpha. They're naturally theta, and that just means they're a sponge Whatever you tell a child until seven, eight, and nine, they accept it as true. And they believe. Belief is natural for them. Now, we've kind of worked ourselves out of that. But you can get back to it in, in like five seconds. So doesn't that be good? Let me just see what I wrote, because I, I just want to pray with you. Okay, that's it. You guys ready? This is how simple it is, guys. So you can spend years in prayer. You can, you can go to Bible school. You can do all this. But 
I haven't met too many children that are willing to do that. And he says, become like a child again and your heart will naturally believe whatever you tell it. You'll have the royal rule and reign. And the royal rule and reign is in your heart. So most people play with their head. Meaning this, so, and I don't, I don't want to get into it, but if you really go look at it when they do the EEGs and stuff, if you're just praying, uh, let's just pick anything, um, like you're praying for God to provide for you. But your heart, you, you could pray, thank you, Father, for abundance. Thank you, Father, for this. Thank you, Father, for this. But if your heart is, is not abundant, if your heart still believes, nah, they, they really kind of show you that you're using about 5% of your brain. You can pray all day. You can tongue all day. You can tongue all day. And if this heart isn't convinced, you're getting nothing. But if this heart is convinced, it's the miracle working power of God. And it's really easy to get your heart convinced. That's what's really cool. So what's really fun is when you get into Alpha and Theta, and I told you when we were in Georgia, the lady who works with epileptic patients, she does all the EEG and brain scans. She goes, man, we just teach them to close their eyes and breathe. And if they close their eyes and breathe, they naturally go into alpha and theta and it heals them. She goes, you're teaching exactly what we do. Isn't that cool? So if it can heal these these patients with epilepsy and they watch the brains going, it goes from alpha, theta now. Alpha and theta, guys, if you don't don't need to understand it, just know this. Whatever you see or tell yourself, your heart accepts it. You become like a child. It believes effortlessly. And once that seed is planted, when the corn cob is in there, you get corn. And it multiplies. So this is working so well with people right now. So just try it. If you think I'm crazy, just try it. So first of all, I would close your eyes. You know, but I want to show you a couple things. If you just take some deep breaths and count down from 10 to 1. Oh, thank you, Father. That's how I like to do it. I'm just like, oh, thank you, Lord. I just like to get into gratitude. I just take some deep breaths. Now, if you're willing to be a little weird and do your eyes, you go into alpha and theta almost instantaneously. So how they do the eyes, guys, if you ever see Olympic athletes or anything, they'll raise their eyes a little bit. And like when you're trying to answer, find a question you don't know the answer to, I remember doing this all the time studying, I'd be like, hmm, we naturally raise our eyes. What we're doing is we're shutting off our analytical mind and we're going, once we do that and you go into alpha and theta, like you're almost your whole brain lights up versus 5%, everything lights up. When we get our heart in order, where we get our heart calmed down, where it's not pumping all these chemicals that make us anxious, angry, now it's called coherence, where the, brain, the heart actually is influenced by the brain, and the heart and the minds work perfectly together. So, meaning this is, once, you're, once your heart, this area, the, in, the internal core of you, rests a little bit, it actually brings the brain into the same frequency as your heart. Now you got something. Now you're into the kingdom of God is what he's saying there. And they, these guys are doing it without a, in scripture. That's why I'm like, I love it because it's actually can, it's perfect scripture to me. So there's a thing you can do if you're just sitting there in your chair or whatever. If you just, if you close your eyes and you raise your eyes, this will be the last week I talk about this because you got it, but I just want to hammer it over and over. If you raise your eyes like 20, 30 degrees above the horizon, you can put your finger on your eyes and you can feel them twitch a little bit. If there is an EEG hooked up to your brain, you go instantly into alpha and theta, the most suggestive state there is. That's actually more. You can go to delta and gamma, but you got to be asleep for that. Now, what's cool, not always, but typically, the other time you have rapid eye movement, that little flicker, is when you're sleeping and you're in deep sleep and you're connected in spirit, guys. You get downloads. You heal your body at that time. Um, that, I told you that story. Like, I would just go to bed and just trust that he would give me the answers. I thought that was normal until I got taught, uh, basically, this, the last half of my junior year at the academy, that wasn't normal. It's like it worked perfectly until then. Then they were like, no, no, this is, now you're into the, what do they call it? Graduate, class, whatever. And they started freaking me out. It worked. It worked. I would just go, you know what, Lord? I'm going to go to sleep, and you're going to give me the answer. I was convinced that it worked, so it worked. But then I was taught, no, that doesn't work. You need to study. I'm like, oh, okay, that sucked, because it didn't work anymore. I got back to it like my senior year. <laughs> so it works. Does God know the answer to everything? And if I'm one with him, then I can receive what he's already given me, which is the answer. I would just go to sleep. And in Delta, everything works. So, but anyway, let's just do this. Now, here's what's cool. What do you want? She, did, she wanted her case settled. Maybe you want perfect health, full of energy. Maybe you want great relationships, You don't need to go through years of psych work. You can change whenever you're ready.
Yeah, but you don't know. We all know. The question is, how long do you want to be in misery? How long do you want to not enjoy life? How long do you want to not live in abundance? How long do you want to be sick? He's given you another possibility anytime you want it. And what's really great is when you get here, guys, the pictures you see and the words you tell yourself, if you're not good at visualization, just tell your heart that you already have it. Because you think in pictures even when you speak, when you say words. So just do it. He takes some deep breaths. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I'm just going to cover the whole gamut here, but if you just raise your eyes and your eyelids a little bit, you can feel them flicker. That's really good, guys. Like I said, if you had an EEG hooked up to you, you're going into alpha and theta immediately. You become like a child. And whatever you tell yourself right here, your heart accepts it by faith and brings it to pass with no effort. You can count on it. And in the beginning, guys, I would just breathe deeply, count 10 to 1 until you learn how to really do it quickly. There's no magic to it. It's just what you've done is you've taken your eyes off the physical problem, the physical situation. Hey, here's the facts. And you guys have all heard me say this, one of my favorite quotes ever. He goes, the natural man is trapped by reason and reality, by the facts. The spiritual man creates his own reality. Meaning you go within and you work how God would work because he's given you his nature. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Now what's cool is if you can picture the end result, like Ashley, she pictured, no, you know what? This thing is settled. So she saw herself joyful as if it was already done. She wasn't praying to God to fix the case. She saw the case already done. And the joy that brings seeing it's already done. If you're not good at visualizing, you'll get better and better. You can just say that. Thank you, Father, that the case is completely done. Thank you, Father, that I'm in divine health. Thank you, Father, that I love effortlessly right now. Thank you, Father, that my relationships are healthy, fulfilled, full of joy. Thank you, Father, that my body is whole. And just know that whatever you tell your, your heart right now starts to accept it, and it starts to bring it to pass. You're going to see little serendipities in your life. You're going to go, wow, it worked. Man, I start to see it work. You'll feel better. And anytime you get a little anxious throughout the day, for if you... You know, if it's a health thing or a financial thing, is just remind yourself. You can do it in 60 seconds laying there in your chair. Just breathe, raise your eyes a little bit, and see it completely done. Thank you, Father. I'm so grateful that I have fabulous wealth. Thank you, Father, that my relationships are full of love, and, and I'm just enjoying this so much. See yourself already healthy. See yourself bounding with joy and full of energy. And your heart goes to work. Your heart, the subconscious goes, okay. I will bring that to pass in ways you know not how, but you will see the harvest, first the blade, then the ear, then the full corn. So whatever you see and whatever you tell yourself is the miracle working power of God. You don't have to be doing it right or wrong. Don't worry about that. It's what you do in that secret place right there. He brings it to pass with no effort on your own. Amen, amen, amen. Does that help you guys? You can just practice that throughout the day. It takes a couple minutes. Do it for sure when you wake up or go to bed. I'm telling you, the, the testimonies I'm getting right now, they're going, it radically changed my prayer life in one week. And it's starting to work. Amen? So God bless you guys. Hopefully that helps. We'll get off this, but I wanted to get it really simple to you. That's, that's divinity. That's prayer. That's partaking of the divine nature. So anyway, somebody get up. Nobody will get up. Said, get up and move. Otherwise they won't. Oh, if you want to give, thank you. you can give. <laughs> and thanks for all you guys online. Is, uh, I'll announce December 3 and 4, we're going to be in Columbus, Ohio, doing a, a deal too, and I'll give you more details on that. So God bless you guys.